Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a first for my channel. It's our very first Outriders video. Hopefully a sign of things to come. I was lucky enough to be invited by Square Enix to join an exclusive ambassador program where I got to go hands on with an early access version of the game. As many of you already know, I've always been a fan of RPGs, looter shooters, and especially coming from my division main background, I was really excited to play this so please do bear in mind though while watching this video all of my comparisons pretty much are going to be towards the division. But if you want even more information, if you feel like I've not given you enough information after you've watched this video, come and check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DJ Tickle. Grab the link to my Discord server down below in the description and all my other socials are down there as well if you have any other questions. So just to start off, this video certainly isn't a review of the game. It doesn't release until February 2nd, 2021. And I only got two hours of gameplay time. And I was thrown in at level 26. So I certainly didn't have enough time to make any real final judgments of the game. This was just my kind of first impressions, what I felt like it was like, and how much I enjoyed it uh, during that two hour session. So first of all, what is Outriders if you've never heard of it before? Outriders is a sci-fi looter shooter looking RPG by the developers at People Can Fly and Square Enix. And at first look it draws many comparisons to Destiny 2 and The Division but unlike these two games this is not a live service game and it's going to be delivered as a full package much like Borderlands 3 was. The game is going to release on all platforms and it's going to feature full crossplay from PC to this generation of consoles and the next. And at a later date, Stadia is going to be supported as well. And you get to play with up to two more of your friends. So a total of three players when you're playing cooperative. It's a third person cover shooter just like Gears of War was. But from the time I spent with it, I spent very little time in cover as the game rewards you massively for being aggressive. The game's going to let you select four classes, the Pyromancer, which is what you see in, in the background, the Trickster, the Devastator and the Technomancer. I went with the Pyromancer because it's a mid-range class and it likes to use SMGs and ARs. I had a lot of fun with the SMGs, which you'll see a little bit later on in this video. So I started my gameplay being thrown in at level 26. And even coming from the division where I have a lot of stats and different gear pieces to think about, there was a lot to look at. I had gear to look at, I had skills to look at, and then I had a skill tree to look at as well. And then I had to think about creating a synergy across all three. Now I expect this is going to be much, much easier and much easier to learn when you're thrown in at level one because you have a very limited skill set that you're going to be able to choose from. And as you progress in the game, that's going to grow making it much easier to take in but being just at level 26 there was a huge amount of customization that you could do from gear to what mods you picked on your gear to what skills that you used because you can only use three and you had a selection of eight to pick from and then on top of that you can then spec your skill tree to suit what you've geared up and what skills that you've used one thing that did concern me was although you can respect the skill tree for free at any time, it clearly would take some time to swap builds over. So like in the division where I have my loadout menu, I can be a healer, and then a couple of seconds later I can be on my rifle build, being a full damage dealer type build. There didn't seem to be a way to quickly swap in this game. It seems to be very focused around building one build. And I'm hoping for people like myself who love a good grind in a looter shooter or an RPG, that this is something I'm going to go full force into. I'm going to grind to max level, I'm going to min max, but then I'm going to want to swap depending if I'm playing by myself or if I'm playing with a group of friends. Maybe I want to be a healer one day, maybe I want to be a damage dealer the next day. I want to be able to switch that role up really quickly. So I am hoping for some kind of loadout menu that certainly didn't seem to be one during the time that I played. Certainly a quality of life feature that is going to be needed in this kind of game. The game did feel like it rained loot, which is great in a looter shooter. It was too early for me to tell within the limited time frame that I had if this loot was actually rewarding. 
It certainly was offering upgrades all of the time when I was playing, which is good, a good sign. And any loot that was trash, I just trashed it. Any mods that I didn't have then went into my library. And then I had a bunch of materials that went into my item storage as well that then could be used for crafting and restructuring gear, leveling it up, adding stats to it at a later period. The Pyromancer was great. It felt really powerful even though I specced into gun damage. All of my skills still felt super powerful, especially ones that could freeze enemies around me and then I could lay into them with my SMG or my AR. It certainly looks like all classes have some kind of freeze move, so that's really really good. It does make you feel like a god essentially and that everything that you're doing is really really powerful. The difficulty of the levels seemed on point when I was playing. I never felt like the game was too easy or too hard. And if I did get stuck on a section, it was generally because I made a mistake, I left myself too exposed, I wasn't killing quick enough to heal, or I just wasn't powerful enough. But after running that section maybe one or two times, you would get some drops. And then at that point then you could upgrade your gear and then go back into it and have an easier time. So as far as pacing, gear, and difficulty felt, it felt really good, it felt, and I was on the standard level of difficulty. I tried out shotguns, ARs and SMGs. I was certainly at home more with ARs and SMGs. Shotguns felt kind of like they do in the division, that they don't really put out enough damage and they're really slow to reload. So hopefully that was just the shotguns that I had, but they certainly didn't seem as powerful or as useful to use as ARs and SMGs. I did have some moments where if you're really up close and personal, you could pull out your shotgun, do one shot and it would absolutely obliterate the enemy in front of you. But the time it took to kind of swap to that weapon, shoot that one shot and then swap back, it just felt pretty clunky. So I kind of stuck with ARs and SMGs across my playthrough. I did get an SMG from a mission reward and I accidentally created this kind of synergy and all of a sudden I became really powerful. Although I felt powerful before, I accidentally became super powerful. It synergized with my skills well. It synergized with what I'd selected in the skill tree really well. And this right away showed me that synergy across skills, gear and the skill tree is gonna be super important to the end game when you're creating the super powerful outrider build that you want to go into the harder content. But it also showed me that we're going to have a lot of build diversity available. It's not going to be just two or three top tier builds like in Division. It certainly feels like we're going to have a lot of variety and a lot of options. And all will feel super powerful in their own way. As long as you get that synergy correct across all of your things. So your gear, your guns, your skill tree and your, your skills. It to me definitely felt like a min maxer's dream. There was over a hundred mods to collect, there was all sorts of stats to level up on each piece of equipment, and although it didn't look like some of these things would take you a long time to level up once you'd found the correct piece, the sheer amount of variety was huge. So you're not going to be doing this once, this is certainly something you're going to be doing on an end game loop and collecting all different types of gear and loot, and then just grinding up to get better stats across the board and maybe even hunting out legendaries. The first thing that I did was straight away was check out the stat page to look at what kind of stats we have available to us, crit chance, crit damage, short range damage, long range damage and things like that. I'll throw that up on the screen now. This is certainly something coming from Division that interests me. There didn't seem to be a way of telling if any of these stats capped out or not. So. It's going to be really good to find out which one of these stats is super powerful, which one we want to be specking into first and which one we want to try and get as high as possible. I played the game via a Stadia type connection. It felt really slick, aiming and movement was really responsive and everything seemed to work really really well and that's only going to feel better when I've got it installed locally. The game being really quick and responsive is super important because the more you kill, the more you heal. If you're not killing, you're not healing. And therefore, you, that's the point you're going to see yourself die. 
This kind of gameplay style, I can kind of compare it to the old builds of Berserk and Clutch in the Division, where it's very fast and furious. If you're not killing enemies or you put yourself in a bad spot where you're too far away and you can't kill an enemy, you are going to die. So it really suited my gameplay style. I love fast and furious kind of shooters, being up close and personal, killing and killing and killing. So if you, if you like a more of a slower sit back sniper pace, as it stands right now, I haven't seen that kind of gameplay in this game. It all, it's all very fast and furious and up close and personal. All the missions and quests that I did looked to be repeatable and at the end of a mission you got to choose one of three rewards as well as all the loot that you picked up during the mission. It was nice to be able to pick some nicer loot at the end of the mission and then obviously tailor that to my kind of build that I was going for. From the two hours of play that I had, I had a lot of fun. Uh, the game time absolutely flew by and it certainly did leave me wanting more. Although this has been a very positive kind of overview, this isn't to say that everything was perfect. I have no idea if the loot is rewarding. I found it a little bit clunky to fast travel around in the menus. I sometimes felt that I had to fast travel twice to get to one place. So being able to fast travel just once, like Destiny, would be much, much better. And I also had some visual glitches when jumping over some walls or trying to traverse around things like that. But the game is not out until February the 2nd, so they've got three months of polish that they can do and hopefully a lot of things like this will disappear, especially from feedback like this. I hope this has provided a really brief overview of Outriders for you and I hope this has been useful. Do come and check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DJ Tickle. I could be live right now where you can ask me any questions you want regarding Outriders. And if I don't know, I certainly will seek to try and find out for you. Let me know down in the comments down below. Are you looking forward to Outriders? Have you pre-ordered? Are you holding off? Or what class are you looking forward to playing the most? Pyro is certainly right up my street, but I am going to have a look at Technomancer as well. Hopefully I'll get another play session before the game releases so I can kind of make my decision what I'm going to start with. But we'll certainly will see. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And thanks everyone for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.